Well, greeting, Mr. Colazar's Forensic Science class. We're going to start in on looking at the different characteristics of fingerprints. Now, it's going to be key that we can look at three general fingerprint distinctions. So what we're going to look at today is the arch, whirl, and loop. And another way you can look at it is laws, where you're saying so that you remember the three, the loop, the arch, and the whirl. Now, population breakdown, about 5% have arch, about 30% population have whirl, and about 65% of the population, most common, have the loop. Now when we look at these three, a couple of characteristics that we want to look into. First off, the arch, if you look, starts on one side and our ridges move all the way from one side to the opposite side. With loops, they start on one side and some of them go back and loop around and end on the same side. And then our whirls, where we get kind of a circular pattern where it's a closed circuit, where a lot of them make that circular pattern from beginning to end. So when we look at those ridges, that's going to be what determines which of those three patterns that we have. Now as we look at it, a couple things that we're going to see or want to observe. Uh, the first one is looking at our ridge count when we look at the core the center of a loop or whirl. No arch is here. So just the loop or the whirl and then to the delta. So the ridge count is going to be the amount of ridges from the core to the delta. So when we look here, the core is kind of the center part of where our ridges loop back and around. And the delta is going to be the triangular part of where the ridges come together. Now our ridge count is going to be the number of ridges, almost like tree rings, that we would count from between those two points. Now ridges, our arches, don't have a ridge count because there's no delta, so you can't go from the delta to the core. So that's just another unique identifying part to our fingerprints. Now breaking them down, basic patterns. Arches can be either plain or tented. Whirls patterns can be a central pocket, a double loop, or an accidental, which starts to really break down uh, uniqueness there. Even identical twins, we talked about this last section, have those small difference between them, the minutiae. Their ridge patterns are different. So even identical twins have different fingerprints. Now arches, we said, our plain arch is going to be one that just moves up some and back down. So our plain arch, just a little bit of a rise. A tented arch, you're going to have a larger spike up and back down. Our loops, uh, we'll look into it so we won't actually use these ones very much. But our loops, radial loop and our ulnar loop, are going to be two of them of depending on where the loops start and where they end. And this would be if we were looking at the right thumb, if it's going towards the ulna bone, and then if your right thumb, and it's curving the opposite way, opens towards your radial bone in your wrist, would be a radial loop. So just a couple extra different uh, ones, but we won't use these ones in class. Whirls, going to make that circular or a circular complete pattern. So our plain whirl, our central pocket, whirl a little bit more of an oval shape that's going to be occurring there. If a print has more than two deltas, so more than two, not two, but two, but if it has three or more, it's mostly a, an accidental. An accidental is kind of the messiest of the fingerprints or kind of a unique own one. With our whirls, we'll always see kind of two deltas, kind of that triangular part of where the ridges meet together. Now a double loop whirl is going to be kind of almost like a yin yang where we kind of have it swish and swish back there. So double loop whirls made by two loops combining into one print are accidental. Two or more patterns, not including the plain arch, that don't clearly fall into one category. And then our last key part here, the minutiae are going to be those minute not minute, but minute differences. So small differences. 
and those small differences are what we're going to see and make us unique fingerprints for each person. Uh, there's no international standard for how many each country requires for matching, uh, so it's a kind of a debate on where they fall. Now, a lot of those characteristics, you know, the ending ridge, where a ridge just stops, the core, and the center of our ridge is delta, kind of that triangular part where everything would build off of there, hook where it just kind of comes out, an eye where there's an opening, a daughter ridge, a bridge where two are connected, crossover. These are all different unique ones that can help us label out what type of fingerprint uh, examples we have. So on here, just a few of the examples that we have crossover ridge, where a ridge is actually kind of crossed over with another one. Core or center, a fork. A lot of times this one is going to be known as, and that's what we're going to know is where it splits apart into two ridges. Ending ridge is where one ridge just stops. Island is going to be just a little circle, or the circled one here, where it's just one part of a ridge just by itself. Delta is our triangular part. Pores, this is where our amino acids and oils are secreted from that uh, allow your hands to actually leave the fingerprints behind. Now, anytime that you look at a fingerprint, you can start to look and see where we have things like the ending ridge here and here. We've got an eye here. We've got, uh, you know, some different ending ridges. So there's a lot of different things that we can begin to see as soon as we start looking closer at a fingerprint. So you can begin to identify those. Now, when we come to identification of each fingerprint pattern, our first one, A, we've got our circular loops. So that would be identified as a whirl. B, we've got kind of that looping up and back down and up where we got almost like the yin and yang where it's a double loop whirl. C, we kind of have it move up and then back down to the same side. So we're at a loop. D, the arch sharply moves up and then back down. So we have our tented arch and then E, Gradual move up, slope back down is our plain arch when it comes to identifying those fingerprints. So we'll be able to use that for identifying types of fingerprints.